was praying and everybody uh, certainly uh, got something of great value from our collective prayers and, and we continue to do so. So don't don't forget to join us tomorrow morning, and every morning, every evening. Prayer. Our prayer. You do something. Amen. 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 And we are now live. All right. <laughs> there it is. And just as a reminder, folks can join us on the Sunday School link to uh, be here live with us as we stream from Zoom. Is that my cue or I'm still, I'm still quiet. <laughs> that is your cue. And uh, we should be streaming live now on the Antioch. I, I, I see, and I see it. I got, I got both going. The, one of the, one of the, the, the um, things that's happening is I'm very uh, unaccustomed to like help. <laughs> and so <laughs> I have all this help and I'm just sitting here like, shouldn't I be doing something like <laughs> hitting some buttons or something it's like no we got it clearly you know what you guys got going on here i couldn't even begin to uh navigate this but it's just it's just first of all so i just want to thank you that's my backwards way of saying thank you for uh for, for just providing this wonderful uh array of mediums right we're on the phone free conference call line we're on zoom and we're on Facebook Live, you know? And so this is so amazing. And we have all those mediums with which to reach the world. Uh, unbelievable uh, opportunities that's before us, unprecedented. I would, I would argue unprecedented in human history that from our own homes and from, uh, you know, whether it be the church building or our homes or wherever we are, that we could literally, literally reach millions you know, with with minimal effort. It's not as if we have to go, you know, dig a ditch and, and fight armies and do all this stuff to reach these people. We can sit home and literally reach millions. Uh, as, as all we need to do is pray and ask God to bless that which he's given us, anointed, and the reach is, is phenomenal. And I'm just excited to be alive to see this day. And I'm so excited about our young people in particular, because you guys, uh, and I'll talk about it a little later, but I know you can't even fathom like where we've come and you shouldn't have to, but I, I can't. And so I appreciate it. But without anything further ado, as they say, let's, let's just open this portion of the service up in prayer. Um, um, and then we um, go on. Father, thank you. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the prayers that have already gone forth with power and anointing. We are in the prayerful mode. And Lord, we want to stay right there and even um, settle our spirits that we may hear, that we may ingest and digest uh, the word that you have for us, not from me, but from you. And that as we read your word and as we talk about it, as we converse and dialogue, that 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 revelation will come to each and every one of us on how to live, what to do, and how to forward thy kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So now one of the other things I'm tasked to doing, and as I told Sister Harris and her team, they were saying, you know, uh, engage people. Um, see, see, this that's the problem. You know, you're asking me to chew gum and walk at the same time. I got to do one or the other, <laughs> chew gum or walk or have a trip. And so, but I'm gonna give it to old college try and see if we can't do uh, some engagement. But uh, uh, um, and so, those of you who are watching, those of you, especially those of you on Zoom, you have the opportunity to say something. 
you know, to, to actually have some banter back and forth. Um, honestly, folk on, you know, Facebook too, you could type it in and maybe somebody will see it. I'm gonna tell you now, you know, matter of fact, I don't even have my glasses on. I can barely see this. And so <laughs> maybe if you type it, you'll see it. And those questions or comments will come to us and we'll include it um, in our presentation. But tonight, just for these few moments that we have together, I wanted to, I had a theme in my spirit and I'm praying that it resonates with somebody. And, and, and it's, and at this, um, let me get my notes up here. Uh, this is going to, it's going to be fun for me. I hope it's the same for you, but um, let me see, get to Wednesday. Uh, and it says, say it loud, right? Uh, say I'm saved and I'm proud. Say it loud. I'm saved and I'm proud. And Samantha, if you're on somewhere, would you please, I know we, I did that as a sermon maybe a year ago or longer. And of all the sermons, she told me like, you know, people for whatever reason, it certainly wasn't because of me, but whatever reason um, had a lot of views. We try to figure out why I would have these many views in the first place, but just, just for, for, you know, giggles, kicks and giggles, just let us know where that was and when that was and how many views we had. But, uh, and and because I, I do have a point I would like to make if, if, if it's relevant by the time we get that. But say it loud, I'm saved and I'm proud. And let me give you context. Here's context, right? No. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you context. Then we're gonna do the scripture. Is that okay? Context? No, let's do the scripture. First. We always wanna do the word first. Let's just, let me, let me flip my thought processes. And so I'm taking this and I'm looking at Acts 1 and 8, just that one verse where it says, but you, but you, look, I want you to really go through this. You, I'm talking to you, whoever you are, but you will receive power. Just that little piece there, but you will receive power. I will, when? When, or of course, after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So once you get the Holy Spirit, you will receive power. And in conjunction with that, and you will be my witnesses. So because you have this power, right, you'll be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, starting in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, even our enemy territory, and to the ends of the earth. Amen to the reading of God's word. That is so Tremendous statement, but I, now let me go back to the context, or at least try to make a, a, a connection between the the title that's in my mind and the scripture that's in my heart, and I believe that God is speaking to us through. Um, I'm saying it loud, and I'm saved, and I'm proud. There was a statement as me as a child that was made. The most, I'm going to say, for me personally, it was the most powerful statement in my life. It made the most marked and, 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 and deep change in my psychic and how the rest of my life was forged by this one statement. And I've heard a lot of great statements. You know, as a child, Dr. King was alive. Yeah, I'm that old. And so we heard Dr. King preach a lot. No, he didn't make the statement. My daddy was a pastor and I've known many bishops and pastors and preachers and teachers and everything. I know all these people, but none of them, and they all made wonderful statements, don't get me wrong. But this one statement was made and some of the older folk who were my age already know what it is because once they say it loud, right? They know the rest of that. The rest of it um, uh, is I'm black and I'm proud. That state was made by James Brown. And a lot of people gonna say, well, how in the world is that statement of all the things you've heard, all the messages or Dr. King's, I have a dream. Are you, are you saying that statement made a bigger impact than that? And I'm gonna say yes. And let me tell you why. When I was born and up, in the time, up until the time I heard that statement, when I was born, I understood myself to be a Negro a Negro person, that's what I was. And to clean it up and to make it a little more palatable, we call ourselves colored. 
So we were colored people. But that was a little more proper. We didn't want to be Negroes because that was too close to the other N-word. So we, we were like, let's just be colored people. And that was okay. But the one thing that you never ever but ever say to any of us at that time was we were Black. Black was considered the very worst. That was worse than the N-word. If you call somebody Black, a child would start crying. People would start fighting. Even in your own family, that was the most, that was the, the biggest insult that you could ever say to a person of color, that you're Black. And so now, now, now you're with me? So that's where we were at as people. That's where we were at as a nation. That's where we were at pretty much as a world. But this guy had the audacity to come say, no, 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 listen to me. Say it loud. I am Black, but I'm proud. Holy smoke, that blew my mind. Wait a minute, say that again? So I, I can accept being Black? Because they, they was calling me Black anyway. But now, wait a minute, I can accept it and be proud. A transformation happened in my spirit, in my mind, and all of a sudden, not just me, it was okay to be Black. So wait a minute, so I don't have to straighten my hair? I can grow an Afro? Because that's my natural hair? Yes. But wait a minute. So I don't have to try to tuck my lips in and be ashamed that I have larger lips than white folks. No. My nose is kind of big. That's okay. Oh, that's okay. Wow. <laughs> it was a revelation. Right? That revelation then led to, right, watch this, a revolution that said no longer if I am Black, which I am, and I'm proud, y'all can't treat me any kind of way anymore. When I'm a colored person, you treated me a certain way and I, I had to take it because I'm colored. When I'm a Negro, that's how you treat them. That's one step up from slave. We were still in that quasi-slavery mentality. But once I became black, oh man, you're in trouble. Once I became black, I'm like, I'm not taking it no more. You shoot me, I'm shooting back. And so you got the black, they weren't the colored Panthers. They were the Black Panthers, right? They weren't the Negro Panthers. They were the Black Panthers. We're Black. And from that time to this very day, now young people can't even understand that. You know, we've always been, no, no, baby. We, we just became Black a little while ago. And being Black what empowered us. Now, where am I going with this? Because here's the thing. That empowerment, that statement, right, was so powerful that it changed a nation, that it changed the world, that now everyone around the world, right, even our census bureau says, they don't say Negro no more, they say white or black. Black is a thing now. Black is powerful because we embrace who we were. Are y'all with me? Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, uh, that, that, that could be a whole conversation. I know some of older folk, I mean, we, we could talk about that all night, of the scars of the marks, even in families, people with light skin got, no, I don't even want to get into that. That was a whole, who was the darkest, who was the lightest, darker people got less. And we had a whole caste system, caste, you know, a class of different people just on the, on the pigmentation of our skins. But now we're all black. And so I want to go back to our scripture because here, there's another even greater change. Being Black is wonderful, realizing I'm Black. But I'm challenging us to, this evening that sometimes we don't even realize that we're saved. So instead of saying it, say it loud, I'm Black and I'm proud. For tonight, let's change that sentence to say, say it loud, I'm saved and I'm proud. A lot of us, if you ask us in a in a, in a you know in the corner, are you saved? Oh yes, say I'm saved. But no, no, no. Say it loud. <laughs> be so there. There is a point of of where we must learn to be not only uh, cognizant that I'm saved, but proud of it. And until we are proud of it, until we understand the power that's possessed in it, until the, uh, we understand that our whole our whole identity has changed, right? We're talking about I'm black. No, the first thing I should be saying, I'm saved. I am a child of God. 
that happens to be black. I'm a child of God that happens to be Spanish or that happens to be white or whatever you are, but a child of God that happens to be a doctor or a lawyer. We identify with so many other things before we identify with being saved. And so here in Acts, he said, but you're going to get, listen, here's the benefit. You shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, you are not powerless. You are not weak. All of a sudden now, wait a minute. So, you know, I said, we have black power. Now we should have t-shirts that said save power. But we are, you know, uh, and, and, I, and, and so what happens, the, di the dialogue or the dialect, I should say, um, that challenges our dialogue also changes our mind. The Bible says in Romans, what, that we must don't conform to the world, but be transformed by how? The renewing of our minds. When your mind is renewed, then your body will follow. When your mind is renewed, and then you understand who you are. I know and we have all kinds of other things. Well, I'm only saved when I come to church. No, I'm only saved if I serve on the, the choir or the usher board. Or the, no, salvation, those are ancillary to your salvation. You are saved when the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit comes on you and comes in you. It, it is who you are. That is so powerful that it moves everything. Let me just back. I'm going to go real quick through this as quick as I can go. Uh, we talked for the last couple of weeks from, about revival, right? We talked about revival. Then we talked the revival. To do that, you need uh, uh, reform, reformation, and then to have the reform that we, we, we want to have, that, right? We need revelation from God. So now we're right at the point of revelation. And the revelation is saying, do y'all hear what God is saying? That when I come upon you, when you believe in me, you shall receive power. That revelation in and of itself, Oh, this is so this is so wonderful. That revelation all by itself, right? You, and we got to stop, you know, not, not everybody else, not my organization, not my denomination, not the, no, you shall receive power. Wait a minute. So you're saying right this moment, I have power? Yes. Me? <laughs> I'm a powerful person? Yes. You shall receive power. So much so. Watch this. That you have the power, the authority, and responsibility, I, I might add, to be witnesses to the entire world. Whoa. And here the four, as we know, we didn't necessarily have the tools to be a witness to the whole world. So we did the best we could with what we had, right? We were witness in our neighborhood, witness on our job, witness. Of, but now I'm going to challenge, and maybe this is where discussion come in. You don't, you can't say that anymore. You can witness a lot of, there's a lot of stuff you could do. You could be online. You could tweet. You could Instagram. You could email. You could talk on the phone. You could do stuff. And so don't give me that's why I'm just living the life. No, whoa, whoa. That was the old paradigm because you didn't have any other alternative. But as God opens up the avenues, right, you have the power uh, that's the problem. He gave you the power. So you can't say, Lord, I don't, I can't do it. No, you have Christ on the inside. Was it Christ in us? The hope of glory. And I don't want to, you know, <laughs> use scriptures and take it out of context, but he, but Christ is definitely ruling us. And as he rules us, we have both the power, both the, which is the ability, right? The dunamis power, that the, 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 the spiritual uh, uh, attributes that we need, right? That, 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 that we have of the ability to, to change atmospheres where we go in and the spirit's upon us and we walk into a room that, that, that's not in keeping with the spirit of God. We come in and, and prayerfully and we've been anointed. There. We can change the conversations. We walk in, we change conversations. We change the airways. So if you could do that you know, in, in, in a setting, in a room, you could do the same thing. Us talking on this right here, somebody who was minding their own business to come past a conversation we're having right now and believe in God because they heard what we were saying. Anybody believe that? <laughs> because it's the same anointing. God's anointing will go anywhere and it works everywhere. We've kind of pigeonholed it, and that's part of the, you know, the, the how do you say, our imprisonment in our mind. 
But as we allow our minds to go, and so I, 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 I kind of spent the first half of this half an hour that we give ourselves to 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 do this. So I'm I'm going to slow down right there and 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 just let you guys jump in if anybody has some something to add or subtract or beat me up about. Feel free. I would like to add something <laughs> as a young person. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. But um, when you were saying uh, earlier about being proud of being who you are and being Black and more than just being Black, but being saved and more than just being saved, but being here, being present, right? It's so funny that you say that because it's more of a statement than a question. But literally last night, I got into a four hour conversation with a very good fr family friend actually of ours. And even though he's not black, he's um, um, Muslim. We were talking about religion and we we're talking about our similarities and God is God. And we were talking about truth and we we're just talking about it. And it made me kind of laugh when you were just talking about, you know, like there's power in, in being Christian. It's, it should be the first thing we say, I'm Christian. My name's Alexis. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it should be the first thing that you say. It should be the first thing that it comes to. We even sing a song about it in church. We literally say, "There is power." Right? Do we not sing that? Like there is power in the name of Jesus. And I absolutely, I feel like that. I work in a very hectic job, you know, and working there. Sometimes I gotta listen to a little Christian music. I, I gotta get my power back, you know, and it. There, it helps. It really does help, like even in a very chaotic place and more than just a place, more than just my job in a chaotic world. There is so much power having that sense of peace. You know what I mean? Feeling protected, feeling like I'm blessed and that's OK. You know what I mean? So I really I do. I, I really feel what you're saying. And I appreciate that. I mean, not that that even that because you're in agreement, but I appreciate the words you're saying because they're so true that, you know, when you brought up the Muslim, a second statement that was made to me that cut me to my heart was made by a Muslim and not, not a famous one. This is a guy who I knew and he was, he was being very serious. He wasn't trying to put down Christianity or anything, but he just said, you know, my problem with Christianity, I said, well, you got a problem with Christianity, what? He said, no, you gotta understand. As a Muslim, watch this now, I'm a Muslim every day. I eat, I dress, my, you know, we are, even our marriage vows, all that, are, are, we don't do what you guys, we don't do, come under a contract. Or we do what we believe is pleasing to Allah. He said, but it seems as Christians, y'all are, are Christians on Sunday. And I was like, oh, that like, that's like he stabbed me in my heart. Like, oh, 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 oh. And, this, and, and the pain hurt because to some degree, I understand what he was saying. I understand what he's saying. And there was some truth, some truth to it, even though we understand the, the nuances, but nuances do not convince people that you have power. You have power because you have power and because you exercise that power. And at that time in my life, and, and, and maybe up to this very moment, but not tomorrow, starting tonight, I'm exercising all the power that I have access to because he's right. I got to be, I got to be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay away from Christian, in the word Christian because it's become so crazy, but I'm trying to be saved. I'm going back to Acts, right? You shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to stay in that powerful vein all the time. And if I recognize that I, no, I got that power, not because I'm, and I, I wish I could lose for a sec, for all eternity, the title pastor and all that, because it's like, well, you got that because, no, it ain't no because, we all got it, right? I just have a job to do, maybe that's different than yours, but that doesn't, that doesn't negate your power at all. And if everybody steps up in their power, you understand? Do you understand what we could do if everybody said, wait a minute, we're equally empowered. I can get to Jesus too. He's your God too. And he's given you this. And what's the end game? To be witnesses to the world. So now, even this medium, I talked about it and I'm so impressed with it. This medium is not my medium. 
it's just not. My day, you know, I was analog. I had a, I had a wonderful time <laughs> in the analog world, <laughs> but I'm not a digital guy. That's y'all's time. And you can, and I'm like, man, what do y'all need from me for y'all to take this medium and take over the earth? I, you know, I, I always love, and maybe you understand this, I, I, I always love Pinky and the Brain because <laughs> that was my favorite cartoon because I love the brain. It's like, what are we going to do tomorrow? The same thing, same thing, take over the world. I've right. always wanted to take over the entire planet, Earth for Jesus. I've never been satisfied with just like a city, a block, or no, forget that. Why do that when you can take over the entire earth, you know, and give and, and say, Lord, we're here. We took this over for you because we know he's coming and we know he's going to be king anyway. Guess what? Whether we do it or not, he's coming and he's going to be king of the earth. Y'all do know that. So I'd rather be on his side, on his good side. Maybe he'd throw me, you know, a little mansion, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with a pool and stuff on the back or something good. But anyway, I digress. Uh, uh, I had my hand up, so. I saw it, yeah, I saw you. Right? Yeah. That's cool. Good, good, good evening again, Pastor. I'm so glad to, to be on the line today. Um, the question I, is, is, uh, I have tonight is, okay, you know, um, so many of us who know or, or trust that we've been saved. Um, how how is it that we we don't recognize that we have this power endowed by the Holy Spirit? Is it that we don't always recognize that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us? Um, what do you believe is is keeping us from doing, like you said, exercising that power, the authority that the Holy Spirit gives us to go out boldly and witness, uh, you know, be witnesses for Christ. Actually, I'm glad you said that because it brings me to the last part that I, I didn't say earlier, <laughs> which is um, in, 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 this, in this sequence of revival to uh, reform, to revelation, the last part is revolution. And until we have revolution, that once you get the revelation and you're ready to fight, the Bible tells us what to fight, the good fight of faith. We have in many instances surrendered to society until culture, to other things like trying to keep the peace. Jesus is not a peacekeeper. You know, we keep making, we keep reinventing him. Like, he, no, he doesn't go out and slap people and fight and shoot. But his fight, right? We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but our we do wrestle and we do fight. And our fight should be against the principalities, against the rules of darkness and, and all the things that are coming against his kingdom. And so I think some of this, a lot of it is because you know we have surrendered. And I think I I, I think one of the things that you need to have, and that's what I put in, in remember the rep, everybody knows about the American Revolution, right? The American Revolution had a couple of things that we need today. No, one thing that we need. I'm just going to cover the one thing. They had a rallying cry, right? When I, as I was young, I had a rallying cry. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Changed my whole life. That Just that one rallying cry changed my life. That's right. I'm black, right? And it started a revolution. People talk about the Nork rides and all that. Let me tell you something. Had it not been for the North Rides, I never would have gotten to Rutgers University. I don't care what everybody say. It was a good thing for me personally. They didn't have any women or blacks. You remember, right? But after that, when we was about to, we, we said we'll burn down the whole state of New Jersey. All of a sudden, all right, y'all can go to school now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you see it, you're seeing it in our way. It was a different time. We wasn't playing. We like we had nothing to lose. And so when you live like you have nothing to lose, right? Then you, guess what? Now you can fight a different type of fight. You're not fighting afraid. And so let's go to the revolution had all these sayings, right? What does it say? No taxation without representation. Eh, you know, join or die. Well, that sounds like a threat to me. Don't tread on me. None of those stuck, but the one that stuck and changed the entire, this thing that made it the United States was what? Give me liberty or give me death. When they came up with that motto, they were like, these people ain't playing. Either you're gonna let me go free 
or we gonna fight to the death. And guess what? England said, I, I don't want no part of this. Well, the Bible tells us if we resist Satan, what? He gonna retreat eventually, but we gotta have this mindset that listen, I want salvation or and nothing else. I'm not taking anything short of the will of God in my life, in my home, in my community, everywhere. I'm not devil that I don't care. Then, then if I have to, if I perish, but I perish. I know I'm going back to Old Testament and using all kinds of scriptures. <laughs> but I, if I perish, I perish. But I got to do the things that what that. I am empowered to do. And it goes back to, we got to believe we're empowered. So yes, I thank you, Reverend Reggie. That you just reminded me to, to make that, that, that point that we have to be that, uh, how you say, that dogmatic. That's not, not dogma is not even the right word. We got to be that uh, 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 serious. That Give me the word, somebody. That <laughs> we just got to be like that tenacious. How about that? and say, no, I don't care what y'all say, right? Holiness is right. I don't care what y'all say. God is right. Jesus is coming back. And I don't care if it's Muslim or anybody. And no, Mr. Muslim, I love Jesus every day. But the question is going to be, well, how? And let me tell you how. Now, now you see, I got to be doing it, though. Well, I'm, and it's got to be more than just activities. Well, you know, I go to choir rehearsal Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got it's got to be. I'm winning the world for Christ, and those things are ancillary. That's what I'm saying. Let those things come because that's part of my planning process to win the world for Christ. Let's never lose the inference of what we're here for. Right? The revolution was always the same. Panthers always did the same. Even King, those, those guys. I mean, I'm not taking them light. They always did this. Their life was. We're freeing our people. Now we gotta say, no, we're freeing our people too, but we're freeing people from sin. We're freeing them from the bondage of sin. And I gotta be just as uh, uh, bold as, as Dr. King, as, as Malcolm X, you know, uh, the people y'all don't know, like Stokey Carmichael and Huey P. P. Newton, and, and those are all my heroes. And, and <laughs> Angela Davis. <laughs> See, they take them out. They don't even talk about the people. But those, those were my heroes. Like King was my daddy's hero. But I was like, man, I want to be Rat Brown. And, and, and those guys, because they were very serious. And they did give their lives, many of them, most of them. But look where I'm at now because they did it. Wow. I didn't even think about that before. Thank you, guys. Wow. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please, I'm absorbing. <laughs> One of the things that I think um, is a personal feeling, I, I can't really speak for my entire generation, but I can speak for the people around me and the things that I've heard and the things that I've seen, at least. And it's almost like, you're right, there, there's always been a rallying cry, give me liberty, give me death, you know, uh, any means necessary. I feel that, you know what I mean? At one point, I felt that, you know, I, I really, I really was really rocking with that. But we say, if you die, if we die, we die. That is something that we say in this age, I guess. Um, it's usually for stupid things. <laughs> like, can we die for something important, please? But whatever. Um, but there is one thing that a lot of us feel like, you see how you feel like you have these leaders. They're, even though you, you, you're talking about your father's leaders, your personal heroes, people who have come after you, you feel like, these are people who, even though like their statements meant something, even if they're not like James Brown, his statement, his little, his little song changed an entire mindset of human beings. You know, a lot of us feel like we don't have leaders. We don't feel like there is something that is leading us, but I feel like, no, he's always been there. No, he's leading. We just there is a certain kind of attention that we need to have a different kind of attention and people want to mistake it especially my age, we want to mistake it for, oh, I got that on my own, or, oh, it's because, it's because, it's because, no, it's because of God. That's it. It's because of God. And I laugh a lot because, like, again, working in a kitchen, a lot of the times, I, my, my chef makes fun of me because all the servers are around me, and I'm giving food dishwashers, and I'm talking to the sous chefs. So I'm friends with everybody, okay? And chef is like, there's a light about you. And I'm like, no, that's God. There's no light about me. There's nothing that I'm doing. I'm just doing everything my parents taught me, my leaders taught me, my pastors taught me that I feel like 
that's what I'm being led by. I'm being led by the spirit. I'm being led by a calling. I'm being led by truth. So living like that in a world that is so dark, people just migrate to it, you know? They migrate to it. And there just needs to be, you're right. Like we have so many beacons that we can scream from, you know? Like there's so many bells that we can ring, you know? There's so many things that we can do. Like, and it's really just about having the courage to speak up for ourselves. It's the, it's the courage to say, I'm Christian, I'm proud of that. It's not an embarrassing thing to say. You shouldn't have to censor yourself. Like, I'm Christian, and like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna fight me? Fight about it. I will fight for God. I will die on this hill. <laughs> like, I do not care, you know? But that's what it feels like, you know? But I, I, I definitely see what you mean. I definitely see what you're coming from. And you also, and you do. I, I read the Bible about your the leaders that you have. You said you don't have leaders. Yes, you do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Acts, Acts 1 and 8, what does it say? What's the first word? You. <laughs> you now. shall receive power. <laughs> you see, who has the power? Yeah. You. And so whoever you are, he's saying, trust me, uh, my daughter, trust me, my son. I'm investing power in you. So what makes you not capable to be the next leader? You know, it's just a matter of what, you know, what aura he gives you, what, what assignment he gives you, not even aura, what assignment he gives you, it may not be in numbers. You might be just a leader of five while somebody else is the leader of five million. And exactly. okay, <laughs> he gave me the, as long as I do what I'm supposed to do with that five, yeah. I'm good, I'm good with him. Cause if I mess up the five million, I got an answer for that. And I'm, I might not like what, this, what, is, what he has to say to me. So I, I really think, yeah, you, I mean, you have such a great uh, opportunity and you have such great uh, energy and all that. You, I mean, I can't even express enough. Like, you know, I would say I wish I was young again, but no. Nah. <laughs> I'm good. Not over here. You don't want to eat over here. No, nah, I don't. Y'all got a challenge. <laughs> Uh, Y'all got a challenge. I don't even want to even fathom. I, I can't fathom, but you know, I did my time, you know, and Lord, this is, you know, this is, I'm trying to sit back now. That's why I got, thank God for all the help y'all got. I'm doing some sitting <laughs> and more sitting. So thank God for you. But no, I, I appreciate that comment as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Wow. Are we, where are we? We are just. Do we do it? Do, do we have we have a self governing time to stop, or are we just? I, I guess we peter out. <laughs> Here's my thing. I'm gonna tell you why I stopped at eight o'clock, right? Because you know we were on prayer from seven to seven thirty, and seven thirty to eight. And I'm gonna tell y'all the honest truth about this. It has nothing to do with Jesus or God. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm just old, <laughs> and so. So sometimes, you know, you got to understand, y'all got to get some, y'all want to go to nine o'clock? No, go ahead. Get somebody else. I'll watch. I'll watch. I'll, I'll get some more coffee. I'll put my feet up. But as far as me doing it, so we got to put it in context. You got an old head trying to do something. I'm going to do it as long as I can, which ain't long at all. And, uh, and then from there, you take over and take the world for Jesus while I applaud you. <laughs> and I do applaud you this evening. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Amen. Any other comments, questions, considerations, critiques? No, I've been not asked for that because Sister Harris, you <laughs> see what you could have done. No, I'm not. <laughs> She'll hit me up later. But um, if if not hearing any, first of all, I want to thank everyone that that's, I'm looking at the many that are on uh, Facebook. Thank you, uh, uh, of course, Zoom. And remember, these things stay online. So share them with your friends and family and everybody and enemies, frenemies, everybody. Just share it so that who knows what to bless somebody. And guess what? If you don't share this, then you do something and share it. And because I know you're anointed, don't tell me you're not because God already said you are. So you, if he says you are, guess what? You are. And if you have a spirit, you have power. And, you, and we got to figure out how to just refine and utilize that power. What? To be witnesses 
Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, what? And all the rest of this planet we call earth. So we thank God for that calling. And if he told us, if he called us to do it, he will empower us to do it and bless us. So with that, I'm just, um, uh, uh, why I gotta be selfish? Uh, Rev, you wanna do a closing prayer for me? I'm, uh, uh, yes, I'm, I'm good at throwing other people. I'm good at throwing people under the bus. <laughs> okay, that, this ain't under the bus. Oh, all right. <laughs> you, just, you just gave me the will. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Father God, let us let us seek the Lord. Father God, we are so grateful for this time of of Bible study, Heavenly Father, Lord, where we can examine Your Word, that we can discuss, Heavenly Father, Lord, that we can ponder it, Heavenly Father, no and understand what it means for our lives, Lord, that we might be empowered, Lord, to go forth, to exercise this word, Lord, with uh, with a newness of, of spirit, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your saving power, Heavenly Father, today. Lord, we thank you for this, again, for our pastor who, who's brought this, this word to us tonight, Lord. And we, we, um, we commit tonight, Father God, to go forth, Lord, to preach this word, unto a dying world, Heavenly Father, Lord, throughout this entire world, which was your great commission, Father. Lord, and we we ask, Lord, that you would just bless every um, eye that has witnessed, every ear that has heard today, Lord, that they might be attentive to all that we have um, um, heard and seen tonight, Lord, and we ask that you would just continue to let this resonate in our spirit as we go forth, and again, in your power through um, the gifting of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling spirit, Father God, help us just to be those shining examples, those light and those beacons on a hill, Lord, just um, calling others to come to salvation, to know Christ as their Savior. So we thank you. We praise your holy and righteous name, and we thank you for this time of fellowship. And it's in Christ Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. And amen. Praise God. God bless y'all. Have a good night. Oh, phone people. I'm, I didn't say nothing to, uh, to y'all either. How are you? See, I told you I'm out. Of, I'm out. Of, I'm like a fish out of water. How y'all doing? God bless you. For, thank you for holding on as well. God bless all of you. Y'all take care. <laughs>